Water. We know it's our most precious resource, but how much longer will it last? It's Pat Mulroy's job to make sure we don't run dry, a job she never expected in a town she had to look up on a map. Pat grew up on an Air Force base in Germany. Her American father was the first civilian to hit German soil in the waning years of World War II. He helped set up civilian operations for the American military. While working there, he met Pat's mother, a German who spoke several languages and translated for the Allies. They married and had two kids, Pat and her younger sister. At a young age, Pat knew she was destined to leave Europe. It's really funny. My dad always said I was more the American and my sister was more the German. After three years of college in Germany, Pat got an unexpected call from UNLV, offering her a full scholarship for her senior year and guaranteed teaching assistantship for her master's in German literature. My parents were in shock. Absol My father was a died in the world East Coaster. To him, the United States ended at the Mississippi River. And everything west of the Mississippi River just didn't exist. It was still the Wild West, wild open plains, you know. You had to walk around with six shooters on your hips. Nevertheless, in 1974, she got on a plane and headed to Nevada. Pat's father had given her enough money to spend one night at a hotel, checking into the UNLV dorms the next day. She got the last room in town at the Desert Rose Motel, where the New York, New York stands today. And I was so tired, all I saw was lights. So I take a cab and I go to the Desert Rose Motel and I check in, I walk into this room and Sue, I thought I was going to die. I'd never seen a round bed in my entire <laughs> life. Round bed, red velvet bed spread, but my favorite part was the mirror on the ceiling. Oh my God. I laid in that bed going, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. What in the world use is that mirror on this ceiling? In those days, they used to have those little narrow windows above the bed. Uh -huh. I just passed out. I figured I needed to sleep in the middle because the <laughs> chances of rolling off in either side were too great. And you couldn't go all the way up to the headboard because a circle gets narrower at the top. So I kind of slept dead center of this bed, which was bizarre in and of itself. So the next day, I opened the curtains. I looked outside and I went, oh, I'm on Mars. I have landed on Mars. Green, green Germany. If you've ever seen Germany, it is just lush and green and it rains all the time. And I, it was a moonscape out there, a total moonscape. After the initial shock, Pat went and checked into the school dorms and another shock. Every floor has those floor monitors, right? The older student in charge of the floor oh, yes, to yes. kind of be the liaison. Yeah, right, right. Mine was a former hooker of Meyer Lansky's. What? <laughs> I died. How did you learn this? Oh, she told me. Straight out. Told me her whole life story about being with Meyer Lansky and how she's gotten out of it and how she's starting her life over again. Then I felt so naive, like I'd just come out of the womb. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> OK, I'm on the moon. <laughs> My floor monitor is a hooker from Meyer Lansky. <laughs> What's next? The next six months were a major adjustment period for Pat, but she grew to love it here. She was very busy, taking 50 credits that year in order to graduate. Also worked as a teaching assistant, teaching three German classes, and during the summer worked as an intern for the UNLV College of Business, Center for Business and Economic Research. That's where she met a lot of people who would later help her get her first job here. Pat got her master's and applied to schools for her doctorate. She decided on Stanford and started there when financial issues called her back home to Germany. After a short stay, she came back to Las Vegas to find work and help her family financially. She had taken a leave of absence from Stanford, intending on going back, but she never did. 
Pat met up with old friends from the UNLV School of Business days, many who had started working for the Clark County Manager's Office. They encouraged her to apply. Pat was hired as a low-level staffer by then-county manager Richard Bunker. Within a year, Pat was working with the legislative team and doing more, working her way up at the county manager's office. This is where she met her husband, Bob Mulroy. Bob worked in the controller's office. In 1984, Pat was asked by the county commission to create the position of justice court administrator. The next year, the new general manager of the water district offered her the number two position. And when he left in 1989, the county wanted Pat for the top job. Rather than the traditional engineer or lawyer running a water utility, which is what you'll find all over the West, they wanted someone um, who had some political experience and some political background. So they offered me the job in 1989, and the rest is history. It's history, all right. That's when growth was spiraling out of control and someone needed to take charge. 20 years ago, there were about 800,000 people in the valley. Now we have 2 million. Pat never expected the population boom to happen so quickly. We were adding 4% every year, and it was a pretty steady increase. The change came when corporate gaming came to the Strip. It was like overnight, everything changed. And we became much more sophisticated as a community. Pat Mulroy is a major player in this community's growth and development. Her friend of 20 years, Michael Saltman, says her contribution to this area is very significant. Smart woman, very smart person. And here comes in this very classy, German-speaking, English-speaking woman who deals with these guys in their bib overalls. And I'm sure they're just blown away by Pat's style, assertive, always prepared, uh, and really smart. She's the best. You know. I'd hate to lose Pat Mulroy in the water world. Pat's good friend Brian Greenspun says we got her when we really needed her. She's taken all that talent and passion and put it toward the common good, which is to find a way to solve our water issues all these years. Mm -hmm. And how is she doing it? She's doing it as an employee of the government. When you look at what she's doing and say, how do we, how do we compensate her? How do we reward her? How do we honor her? We should induct her into a Citizens Hall of Fame. But for Pat, one recognition at a time. I was stunned, and I kept thinking, there are so many people in this community so much more worthy than I am, you know, that have really contributed to businesses' success in Southern Nevada. So I'm humbled, and I'm extremely flattered.